Bert, consciousness is perhaps the most important thing that we can discern as human beings. It's what we're all about. And it's amazing how many people like to talk about it, physical scientists, psychologists, philosophers. How do you approach consciousness from the standpoint of phenomenology? Okay, well, to begin with, even the phenomenologists don't talk much about consciousness. It seems to me it's just a subject about which everybody agrees we know absolutely nothing. It's the hard problem, David Chalmers says, and everybody says, yes, it's the hard problem. And then they go on talking about what makes it so hard anyway. And then people like Tom Nagel say interesting things, and I think on the right track, that there's the material things that are third person things, and then there's this peculiar first person thing, and how could this third person thing in the computer or in a brain ever produce this first person phenomena where I'm looking at the world from some kind of perspective? I think that's, that's a, I don't, I think that's a hard question. I think it's such a hard question that I don't understand why anybody wants to talk about it. I don't, but there is something I will talk about. I mean, I think part of the problem is people are sort of under describing or under theorizing what they mean by consciousness. And there are too many different, uh, something or others under the same rubric consciousness. And maybe we could, if we took them all apart, think of them differently. But the, one of the big deal things is consciousness gets so much tied in with self-consciousness, with being a subject, and a subject is conscious, a, a human subject. That means a subject has something inside it, which is its, its stream of consciousness. And, it's, and that's, uh, that's its inner story. And I think that that's the wrong thing to look for. I, mean, there, I don't think that it's false that sometimes people have streams of experience and maybe they see after images, but it's certainly not our normal way. Consciousness is not, the basically consciousness is not a matter of something inner. It took ages for the, uh, the people in the West who are the only ones who believe this, maybe. I'm not sure. Maybe Buddhists, all that meditating, believe it. But in any case, it took a lot of time to get anybody to believe there was an inner. Uh, in Homer, where I was teaching the Odyssey, you find a funny place in which they, uh, there's a, the usual big dinner party for the heroes to come and hear people sing about them. And, and the, the, the Homer comments that uh, Odysseus had this neat, tr this amazing trick. He was crying inside, but his eyes were dry as bone. Mm. He was the only one who could have inner emotions. All of the rest of them were, as you read it, they're all crying all over the place all the time. They were very emotional. But uh, lo and behold, there you could have an inner secret emotion. Mm. Then the next big move, there, there are two big moves. Augustine, St. Augustine, who was very interested in making a plug for the inner, mm. uh, says that people came from all over to watch St. Jerome read the Bible. Now, what could St. Jerome be doing that was so interesting? It was that he was reading the Bible, but his lips didn't move and no sound came out. He was reading it to himself. Everybody else up to then in the history of the West, apparently at least, read out loud. It'd be fun to see what it was like in other cultures. And Augustine immediately draws the conclusion that he was getting direct, it, the ideas were going directly from the page to his inner self. Mm. And he didn't have to pass through the external world. He didn't have to listen to himself at all. And then uh, Descartes comes along and talks about after images. Look at that. There's nothing really there. And you see that spot on the wall. That couldn't be a spot on the wall. It must be a spot in your mind. Um, so there they get more and more interested in the inner. But phenomenologists think that's a very you know, marginal breakdown sort of experiences, the, all of those <laughs> kind of inner. Mostly we're out there in the world having moods, acting, uh, inter interacting with other people and so forth. And then you have a different story. And Sartre has a good example of that different story. Mm. Sartre wants to answer people who think that phenomenology amounts to introspecting and finding out what you feel and what you believe. He says, when I'm, sorry, I'm talking for sorry now, when I'm running to catch a streetcar, there, I don't, there, I have disappeared. There is no me. There is no I am running. There is just streetcar to be caught. There is a world full of attractions and repulsions. And th that's, 
That's what consciousness is, a world of attractions and repulsions. It's not inner stuff. Now, but it feels like inner stuff. Does it when you're chase, when you're well, no, not when you're chasing the streetcar. Oh, uh. It does, it feels like I've got to get it. I, to, I getting closer, getting clo not even I've got to get it. That's wrong. Now, getting closer, uh, uh, pulling uh, uh, and so forth. Yeah. When and, you're in the moment. Yes, exactly. When you're absorbed in the moment, consciousness is gone. Uh. And self-consciousness is really gone. Mm. And most of the time we are absorbed in the moment. Mm. Mm. And therefore we're looking in the wrong place when we're looking at these inner feelings which are these sort of breakdown moments when you're crying inside because you don't want other people to see it. Uh, so, so that's my only contribution, and it's not much, because I think that that's going to have the same, lots of its own problems. But at least if you do it this that way, you can look at a more basic level of consciousness than having something that feels inner and that has your e is part of your ego and it's, it's your subjectivity and all that. It certainly enriches our understanding of, of, of what consciousness that's may right. be. It that's, may not be a complete understanding, right. but enriches it. That's right, exactly. And uh, if you do that, if you enrich it in with, with the phenomena, you can bring together a certain amount of, of neuroscience which is interested in how you are directly involved in the world so that meaning shows up for you directly in the world and it isn't inner. And if you do that, you may be able to have a better theory of how the brain does it, and maybe the puzzles will go away.